Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another Sumo meeting. Uh, we hadn't met for two weeks, I think. We were on a work week and then everyone was traveling. So we were not here, but now we're very happy to be back. Um, so welcome, everyone. I think there's a couple of updates uh, since we haven't met for two weeks. And so let's go to our agenda. We have the Sumo development updates. Kadir, can you take us through what's going on yes. in Sumo development? Of course. Um, so in Sumo development uh, matters, what we're doing this sprint is mostly focused on uh, our badges effort. So most mm -hmm. of our uh, developers are going to implement uh, badges, uh, details around styling and uh, displaying things on the page and uh, automation. What we will right. be doing is um, it will look awesome. So we can already award badges. I got the first badge, by the way. <laughs> wow, saying. very cool. Um, yes, that I'm very happy you about it. That happens when control it, right? Sorry, what was that? That happens when you control it. Like if I were the bank, I would give myself money, right? Well, uh, to be honest, actually, <laughs> I was awarded. I didn't give it to myself. Oh! <laughs> what, what, what was your first badge about, Kadir? Contributing uh, to Kitsune. Uh, I'm very happy about getting that badge. <laughs> so uh, we can already award badges, which is really cool. And I will print that out and uh, hang it on the wall because it's the first one. Uh, but what we are going uh, to do in this is sprint is... Oops, sorry, Hello. Hello. OK. Um, so yeah, uh, what we are going to do in the sprint is um, make them visible on the website. Um, so I got that badge uh, through email. They will be visible in the profile. They will style the profile pages and the pages for uh, the badges. And then uh, we will also automate these. So you know, when, when you did stuff in the last year or when you did uh, stuff this year, like um, you got, I think, like 10 solutions or something. So you will also be awarded. And uh, for this automation, uh, we are going to take one in this sprint and the rest of the automation uh, in the next sprint. So I'm really okay, looking great. forward to that. It's really coming together now. Um, so yeah, um, and I'm also looking forward to, to get the actual badge design, uh, which Roland is currently working on. Um, so that that's really cool. It's all coming together. Great, that sounds great. So do you uh, have an idea when we, we will be able to see this? Yes, uh, so the styling of badges and the manual awarding of them will be done by the end of the sprint, that is next Tuesday. Um, and then the automation of that will be done by the end of that next week. Um, so we can talk about uh, where we want to launch this. Uh, the summit might be a good idea, but um, it will, uh, so the, the automation stuff and the, um, the styling parts will all be done by next end of next week. Great, great, that sounds really good. So we hope Roland, you are saying something. Roland, I can see that you're moving him up. Yeah. Kadir, it was that a manual badges at the end of this week. So theoretically, if we had a, which I don't have, if we had a Sumo Buddy program badge, we could award at the end of this week, correct? Yeah, any badge that we want. Hmm. OK. Hmm, I, I'm thinking. All right, OK, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, awesome Sumo dev. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're all okay, really chiming in much, now. Everyone. So then let me talk quickly about Persona. Uh, for, for those who uh, took part in the um, uh, Thursday meeting, there is, uh, you already know about this. But uh, we've come, come a long way with the Persona integration. It's actually working on stage. It's working really fine. We're looking into the last details again of styling. Uh, there are some pages that need some love. Um, and we also need to figure out if we can redirect people uh, directly to our page after they click the email activation. So that's what we're investigating this week. And we will be able uh, to test this this week already on uh, staging. So I will send out an email to our contributors first that everyone knows our uh, login method is changing so that no one is surprised by that. Right. And also to get some help um, in testing all the various email addresses and everything that people can think of. Uh, unfortunately, we can't test this on production behind the flag, so we need to test this on uh, staging. 
uh, but I'm I'm um, I'm hopeful that we will be able to figure out all, all of the if there are any bugs we will be able to find them on stage. You can see uh, I've put into the Etherpad uh, a workflow uh, comparison between the old uh, authentication and persona. So if you are inclined to, to look into the details, if you want to know what that's going to look like without going through the process, you can do that there. Oh, perfect. Um, so we are going to turn this on uh, in the at the beginning of next sprint, that is next Tuesday, uh, on production if we don't find any issues this week with our contributors on uh, staging. Well, sounds great. Um, so everyone, if you have some time to test this, uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I'm very excited about Persona, actually, because I think that's going to make many things easier. Yeah, especially for our Gmail using users or Yahoo using users, that's going to be a huge improvement for them. Yeah, that's for sure. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, so you can also see that we did some of, uh, we are doing some of our uh, things for the 25% time, maybe not as much as usual, but uh, that's because now we really want to get uh, through our badges program. That, that uh, sounds, that's where that we sounds, are. That sounds really great. Thanks for the update, right. Kadir. Right. Anything new from... has... Sorry, Roland? If anyone has any uh, badge questions, feel free to ask me or Kadir. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So everyone, Roland's there. Um, I see that we don't have anything for as a UX update. Kadir, is that right? Yeah, that's true. So uh, no update this week for that. OK, so then we can move out uh, to the round table. And um, I see that Firefox uh, for desktop um, doesn't have anything right now. So I guess that maybe um, Matt uh, or Tyler could later um, update everyone if there's um, anything going on. So I'm sure they will post it to the forums. Um, but I assume that no news is good news. So. I think that everything's fine on the on the Firefox uh, for desktop. Um, Eva, do you have any any news on Firefox for desktop, or is everything no. good? No, I think so. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, Android, uh, Firefox for Android. Uh, Roland, do you want to take it from here? Uh, uh, Roland, you are talking very fast, but no one can hear you. No, now you're, uh, now you're teasing. We are <laughs> 23, Firefox 23, Firefox 24, as far as I know, is done in terms of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Maybe a few little things you have to do there, but not anything major or hard. Uh, Firefox 25, as we said on, when was that? Thursday? Uh, we are switching our technical writing program to a, uh, what is it called, what did you guys call it? Self-serve technical writing program. And we're moving right. the, uh, we are moving the uh, research up because our experience has been that it's, you know, it's a little time constrained. So I've already started a research thingy there, research etherpad thingy. Right. Etherpad, and uh, feel free to uh, put that in and uh, Michael and I will discuss this research on Wednesday, and the articles will start writing on Wednesday. So that's it. Can I do Thunderbird now? Yes, <laughs> yes, please, Roland. Um, please test Thunderbird 24 beta. We have one week. It, you know, we can always find new last minute stuff, or we can do stuff for the next um, release of Thunderbird. Um, and if you're a technical and you use Gmail, we'd love your help debugging Gmail and ConStore. Constor is this crazy email thing, which you could spend hours yakshading. So it's awesome if you want to get into that. And it would be very, very helpful from a very technical QA point of view or from a coder point of view. If someone could jump in there and see how Thunderbird's working with Gmail Constor, that would be great. And there's a link there to the great Gmail Constor thread of doom. OK, that sounds great. So everyone, help us a little bit with uh... Thunderbird, it needs some love, right, Roland? I've had too Why much are you caffeine. laughing so much? I've had too much caffeine this morning. Oh, OK. So Roland is not laughing because he's happy. He just had too much coffee. No, I think he's happy, too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for the updates, Roland. And um, now let's move on to Firefox OS. Uh, Michelle, are you there? Can you help us a little bit? Hi. Uh, Hi, Michelle. Yes. 
So uh, this is what I put in the Etherpad. I want to thank everyone for helping on the forums. Um, we're getting questions every single day from English and Spanish and Polish users. So kudos to all the forum moderators and contributors doing a great job out there. And um, some updates to the KB last week for Hot Topic. Um, and also setting, yes, setting, uh, setting some articles ready for l 10 n We set our first group, for, as you know, Rosanna, um, ready for l 10 n Last week we'll set 10 articles every week right. uh, for the next month or so in the run-up to the end of the quarter. So thanks to all, to all the localizers for your help to uh, get those ready. So thank you. Uh, for everyone interested. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was saying that for everyone interested that you you are posting these updates on the uh, Elton and Firm, mm -hmm. and that um, you know many locales have already translated all the articles. So it doesn't mean that we have 60 new articles. It's just that we're posting the list with uh, some articles that were already there. Right, Michelle? Right. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to say. It's just uh, minor updates and tweaks to the articles. Um, we should have just a, only a couple of new articles for this release, and then little updates to the, to the others. So that, that's great. No reason to be worried. Uh, we had our Spanish, Polish, and Brazilian Portuguese localizers who managed this in a very few weeks before the launch of Firefox OS in their country. Um, and we're also there to help uh, uh, you guys. So just that. Um, sorry, Michelle, I didn't mean to interrupt. Do you have anything else? Otherwise, I'm, I'll, I'll jump to Michael. I just have a question. The Firefox uh, OS 1.1, when is that? What's the schedule for that to be released? Well, um, it's a 12-week release cycle. So um, I think they're finalizing the final feature for uh, the end of this work week is going to speak. So I think that's at which we'll hand off to partners and then we'll decide when um, when it's ready to go out to devices. The OEM will make that final decision. So, so there's no clear date yet, right? I think that what, what we're hearing is that there is not a a defined date. Well, it depends. Probably, Are you saying when the, when when we finish when Mozilla finishes the code, right? Or when, when it gets to use it. I guess when Mozilla finishes the code, because that's the only part we control, right? Then after that, then it's it, it could be varying times depending on where you live or something, who that's, your carrier is. That's right. So I think it's next week. So we're it's twelve weeks. Ends next week. I guess we should move July, August, yeah. What's that? So the twelve weeks ends next week and then they start the next cycle. Yeah. But I mean they have already started on one that few, but they're supposed oh. to be uh, twelve weeks apart. Gotcha. So it's a little chaotic, but stabilizing slowly it sounds like. It's fast, but not as fast as you, as step out. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Michelle, thanks a lot for the updates. And, uh, you know, um, I have been pinging um, some of you localizers uh, because we, we, we think that, you know, your country might be next on the queue. Um, if anyone is interested and has any questions, just contact me or Michelle uh, or Hermina, and we will try to let you know uh, so that we're all prepared. Um, thanks, Michelle, for, for that update. Um, the next on the list, Thunderbird, we already had. So we can go over to metrics. Kadir, you have some interesting uh, news from the... Um, what, what was yeah. It? Yep, uh, some interesting things. So one of them is the helpful loads. They seem to stabilize, and I'm going to look into why that is. Um, it's always interesting because they vary very little 
um, and, and when there is an uptick, it's always like there's probably something huge that happened. So I'm going to look into that. Um, other than that, you have the active contributors, and it looks a little bit grim uh, when you look at the army of awesome contributors, but you have to see that in perspective. So when you look at uh, last year, what happened then, uh, you will see that at the end of the uh, summer, you always have um, this tick going down, which is a bit surprising because um, you would think that people come, come back home and have more time now. But that's how it is. Uh, at the end of the summer, uh, contributions in the uh, Army of Awesome go down. And then in uh, October, they pick up again. Uh, so if you are looking at the KPI dashboard and you're seeing the um, Army of Awesome contributor number go down, don't panic. That's seasonal for whatever reason. Yes. Um, then um, uh, some happy news. Uh, the Alton N coverage is back to over 80%. Uh, that's really nice to see. You can actually really see how contributors have been uh, bumping it up over the last uh, few weeks. So that's yeah, really I'm cool to see. Yeah, uh, a little, um, uh, a little, in a little bit, I'm going to talk about all the lookouts that have been doing great jobs. All right. Yeah, uh, and that's actually all I have uh, from the metrics front. Cool. Sounds sounds good. Uh, that, that sounds like uh, everything's uh, good. So, Michael, I think you are the next uh, on with the uh, knowledge base yep. updates. Um, nothing super new. Just it's basically what we talked about uh, in the platform meeting on Thursday, but the technical writing program is, as Roland alluded to earlier, um, we're going to spend less time focusing on it, more time focusing on localization. Um, but um, So we're going to make this kind of like a self-service thing. Um, there's lots of documentation already. We need to kind of tweak it a little bit to make it like um, do these things, um, you know, edit this many articles or participate in research threads, we're still working on that, uh, Rosanna and I. Um, and then it would be like, you do these things, and then uh, when you've completed all the requirements, you can just ask Rosanna to check. She'll verify that you've done this, and you can get a badge or a certificate and have completed the technical writing program. Yes. So basically, because we had a lot of contributors that were also coming to us, like, I want to be part of the technical writing program. And, you know, we had so many people that are, were already helping a lot with Sumo. Um, so now we want to try to figure out a way uh, where you can just get involved, like uh, at any other part of Sumo, localization, or of Bosom, or the forums. So you just go, um, you get involved, you do your things. And we just have, you know, if you want a certificate or a badge, um, we want to just know that you have done significant contributions. And then we can just, you know, uh, hand you a certificate, uh, you know, awarding, you know, like uh, saying that you've done those uh, contributions. So I, I think for anyone who's interested in having a certificate and is already contributing to Sumo, for anyone who wants to learn, um, it's a great thing. What we cannot provide is the one-on-one -on -one support, as Michael said, but um, pretty much just contribute to the KB as we've done so far. And, um, you know, if you do great things, we will reward you and we, are, uh, we, we can give you a certificate. That's pretty much the essence of it. And that's also not to say that you can't uh, ask uh, for help. I mean, it's, it's not like all one, one, one to one questions, uh, explain this to me, stuff goes away. I'm always available. Ping me on IRC, email me, private message me. If you have questions about how to do things, how things work, what's the best way to go about something. Right. So pretty much the technical writing uh, program helped us, uh, I think, uh, structure better the way to get involved uh, in Sumo. Um, but you know, we want just uh, you to jump in, and uh, I think we have amazing documentation. And then you just get started. And if you want a certificate, you know, we just have a couple of things that you need to accomplish, and that's it. We're still we're still your Sumo buddy. Anyway, so that's from the technical writing program. Michael, you have Firefox 25. Tell us about it. Yep, just up, uh, researching what needs to what needs to happen uh, for articles and and support uh, this week. Um, like Roland said already. Um, yeah, those are the big. That's 
that's it. Nothing else to say about it. Okay, it's on cool. the to-do so list. Everyone- if that will break anything. We have to wait for future releases for that. Yeah, right. Cool. So it seems to be that uh, everything's going to be manageable. So now going to Elton N. Uh, so Kadir mentioned that we're back on track uh, with the localization coverage. Uh, and I wanted to thank to a lot of localizers. Maybe it's the end of the summer. Now we're already in September in the north hemisphere of this world. Um, you know, many localizers picked up the work. And um, I wanted to mention that we have um, a couple of locales that are uh, back to 100%, the top articles which is Czech, Spanish, uh, Dutch, Russian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, um, Brazilian, Portuguese, Taiwanese, and Slovenian. Uh, yeah. Everyone, yeah. fantastic. Thanks a lot. For oh, sorry. Here. No, localizers. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's, very, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to check with the aggregated uh, metrics. Uh, so everyone, thanks a lot. You're, you're doing an amazing job. And... Um, I want to recognize, um, I put it up for the contributors of the week, I want to recognize especially, uh, I mean, everyone's doing a great job, um, but I think that the Russian locale picked up, if you go and look there, they just, you know, in one month, they, they, they really, they kick it. I mean, they just, they're doing a great job. Uh, so we have a, a couple of very involved uh, Russian contributors. Thank you very much uh, for, for helping us. We have a ton, a ton, a ton of users in, in Russia. So it's, it's very helpful. And I think it's a little, an inspirational story. Sometimes one, two people come and then a locale just picks up and, and everything starts to be easier. Um, so thanks, thanks about that. I, I wanted to, uh, to talk about that. But yeah, apart from that, localization, as Michelle mentioned, uh, Firefox, um, Firefox OS, we have the plan. We're publishing it on the forums. I'm talking to the locales. And that will have a little bit more of pressure, but you know we're here to help. And um, otherwise, things are going great, and you know we're finally recovering from those 20, uh, 23 updates, right, Michael? Or 24? Sorry. Yeah, 20, 23. The, the 23, one. right? 23, which was yeah, it was a lot. So thanks a lot, everyone, for <laughs> staying with us. Um, that that's it for localization. And so I will hand it over to Madalena and the support forum. Hello. Um, so first of all, before going uh, to the support forum, just wanted to say спасибо to everybody in Russian for the localization work. Um, great job, and thanks everybody. And I forgot how to write that in in uh, Cyrillic, but I'll remember. Anyway, um, <laughs> just like my my few words in Russian, I know I only know a few. Um, so going back to the support forum, I don't have a lot of updates as I was away, but I have one big update uh, that we have finally launched the separated metrics for localized forums. So now you can see how we're doing on each uh, forum that we have. Um, right now it's only two basically English and, and uh, Brazilian Portuguese, but there will be more. Um, anyway, you can check that in the contributors tools. You have their support for metrics. Please do so because it is very interesting to see what is happening. Um, the English forum is doing great uh, where we have been moving very fast with the 24 hour response rate that we actually just initiated back in February or March. Um, in July, we were at 97% and in August, we were at 96%. So we're doing very well. And also the solve rate is somewhere up there um, and increased from 27% in July to 32% in August. So we're actually doing a lot better than we thought uh, on the English forum. We still have some work to do uh, on the Portuguese one, but we will, we will get there as well. Anyway, uh, many thanks for everybody um, who's answering on our forums, especially on the English one. Uh, it's a big effort and thanks so much guys for doing everything. I know there's also like a lot of stuff to do, moderators, spammers, craziness. So thanks for for being there and sticking with us. Uh, great job. And yeah, here's the metric to, to prove it finally. And that's it. Fantastic. That's great. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed by everyone. It's amazing that we're getting answers so quickly out the door. So wow, kudos. Yeah. Very, and very could- cool. Yeah, I just want, want to specify one more thing uh, that Kadir discovered. We're actually, most of the, these questions are answered in less than an hour. Um, so 24 hours, it's actually more like an hour. 
um, we might want to like look at the metric, uh, that metric as well and put it up there, but just so, so you know that we're actually answering very, very, very fast. Yeah, wow. uh, just, just a note to that, you saw it in the uh, Sumo development updates. Uh, one thing that we're doing in this print is we are removing the uh, lock threads from our KPI because uh, those are things that we don't actually want to reply to. Um, so we are going to remove them from here, and then you will see actually that uh, our reply rate is almost 100%. So we reply to essentially every single thread, and we do that within one hour in over 96% of the cases, which is incredible. Wow. Wow. Really cool. That, that sounds really cool. Thanks a lot. Um, that's very Thanks cool. Thanks to all the contributors who, yeah. Yeah, we're doing a great job. Fantastic. Yeah. I was checking well, the numbers again and again, but that's how yeah. it is. It's amazing. It's that's how it incredible. is. Everyone's wonderful. <laughs> very cool. Uh, so I'm, I, I want to go. My my nomination. I'm going to go here. Very um, biased. My nomination for the contributor of the week is the uh, Russian localization <coughs> team, especially um, Alexander, better known as uh, Unghost. Uh, I can put his, uh, his nickname there. Grilida and uh, Harry. You guys have done an amazing job and you know the Russian localization coverage just um, went up and I just see that you guys are working a lot. Um, so, you know, million thanks. Um, you know, I, I, I know that it's not easy to find the time to do so. So thanks a lot. It's very cool. That's my um, nomination for the contributor of the week. Uh, I want to hear some more others. So, yeah, I would like to nominate Noah. He has been doing some really great investigative work, he's, which he is hopefully going to share very soon. Uh, he helped me a lot uh, looking into uh, oddities in the forum. Uh, and he's been doing that for quite a while, so I think it's about time that we uh, recognize him too. Yeah, that sounds good, Kadir. Maybe you can put it on the on the Etherpad. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good. Uh, anyone has anyone to, you know, to reward this week for their amazing job? Okay, well, think it, and again, contributors, if you know any one of you wants to nominate a fellow contributor, just come and modify the Etherpad. This is open for everyone. Just put the name of the people you want to uh, uh, nominate and your name on the site so that you know we know who nominated them. And that's it. That's it. It's, it's a great way to recognize the, the amazing work that uh, each one of you is doing. So yeah, that's cool. Um, I see that uh, Eva is the unicorn of the week. Uh, I hope you're prepared, Eva, because you will move like three times. It's time to deliver. I, I, kind of, I, I never been a unicorn. Uh, it's, I, I'm not Cheng. Cheng is the one who always pushes back. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. That, that was unfair. <laughs> this is the first time I'm actually a volunteer. Uh, funny thing is that I was thinking that I was going to be in, in, in Oakland, back at, in California, when, when I, I, I proposed myself, because I had a pretty clear thing about what I wanted to, to share with you guys. But because I came to my pants house, uh, back where I started at Mozilla, uh, I wanted to share something else from my, my past, because Michael showed something that was pretty vintage, but I have also my my old school Evi that some of you who follow me on Twitter know about Grotek and, and Grotek in a lot of places. And that's because I used to play hardcore role playing games and board games. So I wanted to share with you some of the stuff that I used to be doing when I was like little. Let's see if you can see any any of these. I used to spend a lot of time painting miniatures that really I wish my connection was uh, better today. No, I don't think it's your oh, wow, I don't think it's your connection. Wow. Well, no, but uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, I, your I know. video those is extremely things... skipping. Yeah, but those little things you are see the super face? hard to paint. Ah. Huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, cool. it's wow. That's very deep. 
tail. Look wow. At, look at my fingers. <laughs> that is very detailed. Um, okay, that's pretty wow. cool, Ibai. That's pretty cool. I think you kind of rocked this. Can you see uh, this uniform. one? With the drunken nose. Wow. <laughs> <You> <laughs> Wow! You, might have time. The thing is, you could do one for sumo. Do three hundred. There, thanks. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm, <laughs> I, I will be able to paint again. The thing is that I wasn't bad at all playing. This is my diploma from when I lost the, lost the final at the tournament in Nottingham. Wow! Oh, wow! I was so there. You were second. I was, you didn't I won, lose. You were just second. I, I I won all the games by the final. I was top Aww. of the ranking when I hit the final, but then I dices were against me that day. Aww. But yeah, I have a okay. lot of miniatures here. All that, not only dwarves, but I wanted to show some of the nicest ones. Nice. That, that that's pretty cool, Imai. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, that's it, it's, I mean, it's impressive both the diploma and of course the detail of the of the painting. So that's pretty cool. A lot of patience. Yeah. Cool. So, anyone, does anyone have anything else to add? Is anyone um, following this meeting who wants to add anything? Otherwise, I would say I give you back uh, 24 minutes of your week. Um, have a great week. Thanks, everyone, for uh, contributing. Uh, we'll see you uh, next week on Monday. And thanks a lot. Thanks for yeah, hosting, Rosanna. See you. Bye. Have, have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye.